So the, the main, main uh, answer by most of you is this last one. Uh, horizontal line at the beginning, what does that tell you about, what's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. If the velocity isn't changing, then the acceleration is zero. Another way of saying the same thing. A horizontal line is a velocity of, of, on a velocity versus time graph is a velocity that isn't changing with time. It's a positive velocity, but it isn't changing with time, so the acceleration is zero at the beginning, as E shows. Then the velocity changes. In fact, it's, the velocity is x is in the positive direction, so that's like this. x is in the positive direction, then the velocity changes as I slow down and come to a halt. If I was moving that way, and, and my vector looks like this, and I want it to look to be zero, then I need an acceleration vector in the opposite direction. If I'm moving in the positive direction, but slowing down and stopping, then my acceleration vector, the change in my velocity, is in the negative direction, the opposite direction. Or, this is a negative slope line. Another way of saying the same thing, so, so the acceleration is is negative in, in this slowing down part. And after the slowing down part, you're stopped, so the acceleration is zero again. So if I, if I go back to Newton's second law, the net force on me at the beginning, while, I, while my acceleration is zero and my velocity is constant, the net force on me is zero. In order to slow down, I needed a net force in the other direction, and then I stop. And then my net force is zero again because my velocity stops changing. While I was slowing down, I needed a net force opposite to me. I, I could point out that the reason there's a net force opposite to me is friction between my feet and the ground. If I was on really slick ice, and I was moving along like this, and I tried to stop, I wouldn't. I would keep on going. If the friction force is gone, I can't stop and turn around and do all the things I'd like to do in walking. Any questions about that one? So you've answered this one before. I'm not going to ask it again. If the car is going around in a circle at a constant speed, you answered this for delta v. You took, I remember this, you took a v final, subtracted v initial, and you found a delta v that points toward the center of the circle. If I asked acceleration vector direction, well, remember acceleration is just delta v over delta t. It's the time rate of change. And so the acceleration vector points toward the center of the circle. If something is going around in a circle, like this thing, at a constant speed around in the circle, then the only thing that's changing is its direction. When it's over here, its direction is toward you. As it goes around like this, its direction changes. By the time it's over here, its direction is to your left. And by the time it gets over here, its direction is away from you. Its direction is changing all the time. The direction of the change of velocity, in other words, the direction of delta v, v final minus v initial, is toward the center of the circle, as long as the speed is constant. This is a bunch of math that I just thought I'd post in case somebody wanted to go through it and take limits and do derivatives and stuff like that. The upshot is <laughs> that if something is going around in a circle, at a constant speed, then there's uh, acceleration toward the center. The acceleration vector points toward the center, something that we already knew weeks ago. There's actually a name people give an acceleration toward the center, centripetal. It just means center seeking. It just means the acceleration vector points toward the center. <coughs> if the motion is a circle, 
at a constant speed, then the acceleration vector points toward the center. If the acceleration vector points toward the center, you can go up here by Newton's second law, the net force had better point toward the center of the circle. Not it had better. It had better means, uh, if you're answering a question on a quiz, it had better. Uh, but Newton says, if the net force points toward the center of the circle, then the speed is not changing, but its direction is changing. The direction of the velocity vector is changing. And if it keeps pointing toward the center of the circle, then the object will just go around in a circle at a constant speed. The magnitude of that acceleration depends on the speed. Depends on the square of the speed, in fact. If you double the speed, if I double the speed, I'm not sure I want to do this, but I'm going to anyway. That's close to doubling the speed. If I double the speed, then the, the centripetal acceleration gets bigger. In fact, four times bigger. You need four times as big a force toward the center when it's moving really fast than when it's moving slower. That's probably something you know. Anyone that's swung a ball around on a string knows that once it's moving really fast, you have to pull a lot harder toward a lot on the string to, to keep it going in that circle. So, now we get to this thing. This is rotating at a constant angular velocity. If the angular velocity is constant and the radius of the circle is constant, which it is right now, these balls, the, the center of the circle is, is right here, and the balls stay at a constant radius as they move around. So the speed is constant. When the ball is exactly, suppose I take a snapshot of this thing swinging around. If I take a snapshot at exactly the right time, that ball will be over there on the right. So, so let me try to tell you, you can see the motion, but let me explain to you what's going on. Uh, because you have to think about all the details. The ball is going around in a horizontal circle. If you look at this thing, the, ball, the heights of the balls are not changing. Because the heights are not changing, they are going around in a horizontal circle. So I want you to think about the direction that the acceleration has to be because of the motion. It's going around in a horizontal circle. That tells you something about the direction of the acceleration. And by Newton's second law, if I know the direction of the acceleration, that tells me the direction of the sum of the forces. So what's the best force diagram? In each of them, there's only two forces. Why is that? Only two objects act on one of these tennis balls. The earth pulls straight down, and it turns out the, uh, well, I'll let you deal with it. 